The spiritual advisor to President Trump says she has never wanted to walk away from God's most famous assignment for her, even when she sat on a hotel bed in Paris watching her Twitter followers dwindle after news broke that she would give the benediction at Mr. Trump's inauguration. My Twitter's going down 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, Paula White Kane said in an exclusive interview with The Washington Times. I'm, watching it, like, oh man, where's the bottom of this hole? The petite 53-year-old televangelist with a Tupelo drawl and trademark heels opens up on her past life and association with Mr. Trump in a new memoir, Something Greater, growing up without a relationship with Jesus, she lost her alcoholic father, battled bulimia and became pregnant at 18, Ms. White Kane says. She experienced a divine visitation in 1986 while beside her three-month-old playpen. After this vision, in which she saw herself preaching the gospel to every continent, she began a Christian faith that was scorned by her mother and stepfather. It also led her to build a church in Tampa, Florida, replete with television specials and eventually landed her a phone call from a New York billionaire who was channel surfing late at night in his South Florida mansion. But it's her latest act, as Christian counselor and voucher for Mr. Trump, that has made her nearly a household name. Even on her book tour, and in between ministering to her church in Orlando, Florida, Ms. White Kane keeps close tabs with Mr. Trump. Every time I walk over, to him, I don't just go say, hello, you don't know what you're going to do. Are you going to talk as friends? Are you going to talk spiritual? Going to talk about life? Are you going to talk about, how's the base? Ms. White Kane said. It's a spiritual relationship that has grown very close. She is now joining the White House in an official capacity, as an advisor to its Faith and Opportunity Initiative. She will be heading up the program, a White House spokesman told Religion News Service. Ms. White Kane said she told Mr. Trump in 2011 that she would personally hate having him run for president, though she felt the country needed him. Had Mr. Trump stayed out of politics, the pastor probably would be running her Florida church and ministering to elite entertainers and athletes from Hollywood to New York City. By the mid-2000s, Ms. White Kane's pastoral missions, documented in Something Greater, counted pop star Michael Jackson, whom she described as a little boy, the guy who writes songs from a tree, after meeting him at Neverland Ranch in 2003, and Kid Rock, who wore a baby blue tuxedo and top hat to hear her preach in Detroit. She even led a Bible study for the New York Yankees. Ms. White Kane grew Without Walls International Church, a Pentecostal Word of Faith ministry, with her second husband, preacher Randy White, before starting her own Paula White Ministries. In 2011, she was named senior pastor at New Destiny Christian Church in Apopka, Florida. Mr. Trump's campaign wasn't her first foray into politics. In her recent interview with The Washington Times, she spoke of the politicians who had courted her over the years. I was at Oprah Winfrey's house, and they put me on the blanket with President Obama and Michelle, except for then it was Sen. Obama, Ms. White Kane said. And, before that, it was both Bushes. Mitt Romney had me to his home, and, sent me a rocking chair, representatives for Mr. Romney and Ms. Winfrey did not respond to requests for confirmation. No, what remains special about Mr. Trump, Ms. White Kane said, is a relationship born with the New York real estate giant, 18 years ago by Ms. Her account, when he cast the blue-eyed, blonde televangelist known for her athletic preaching style, photographs in the book show her with hands raised, kneeling on stage and holding a shovel, as the chairwoman of his evangelical advisory committee. Ms. White Kane has published self-help books, but something greater, is more personal. She said it took nine years to write. The book is broken into three sections, with the opening, A Good Girl. It delves into her divorce from Mr. White and meet up with her third and current husband, rock band Journey's keyboardist Jonathan Kane, aboard a Southwest Airlines flight. In the final section, titled, Divine Purpose, Ms. White Kane describes that, Mr. 
Trump was skimming channels on cable television late one night at Mar-a-Lago when he stopped on a broadcast of Ms. White Cane preaching. He soon called Ms. White Cane and told her, according to, something greater, Pale, you have the it factor, Mr. Trump, she wrote, places her somewhere between his favorite sermonists Billy Graham and Jimmy Swaggart, and quoted from her own sermons. I grab a legal notepad and start jotting down notes as he is talking to me. Ms. White Cane says in something greater, part of me still half believe someone is pulling my leg, that this is some elaborate joke and the punchline is coming any moment, something greater, the book dedicates significant real estate to the fermenting of Mr. Trump and Ms. White Cane's relationship, including her purchase of a unit in a Trump-owned building, though she writes she has never taken a dime from him for her ministry, and his 2006 appearance on her television show, Paula White Today. She spoke of her admiration of the man. I find myself inspired by his vision, thought process, keen insight and overall discipline, she wrote. He's a brilliant thinker who tends to walk several steps ahead of the masses. It was Mr. Trump's spiritual upbringing, however, that spoke to her from the first phone call. Mr. Trump's father moved the family from their first Presbyterian church to pews of Norman Vincent Peale's gospel, whose accolades spoke to a generation whose ambitions were broken by the Great Depression. In their first phone conversation, said Ms. White Kane, Mr. Trump shared almost verbatim one sermon that deeply affected him. It encouraged people to never quit. Obviously, that was an impactful sermon for him, Ms. White Kane said. Norman Vincent Peale brought the gospel in a very practical way in our time of history for not only New York but our nation and also the Trump family. She said, don't quit, remains a core ethos for Mr. Trump. Ms. White Kane's advancement has been fodder for liberal and evangelical critics alike. In 2018, a federal judge ordered her to pay $12,000 to a Seattle woman who countersued Ms. White Kane after she sought to shut down the woman's YouTube channel, which plays critical commentary over videos of Ms. White Kane preaching. But she argues the dogged allegations that she is a prosperity preacher, she denies it emphatically in the interview, saying she does not believe in Lot of God, in part, derived from the mechanics of her ministry. I felt a mandate to go on TV, said Ms. White Kane, whose show appeared on Bed and Trinity Broadcasting Network. You're paying your own airtime. You have three minutes commercial content. Dot dot dot. I don't just get to wiggle my nose and money drops out of the sky. It's just part of the business. The interplay of money and faith is a theme throughout her book and her life. Although Ms. White Kane noted that money destroyed her father, her grandfather grew wealthy from expanding electricity over Mississippi, she recognizes the real need people have to relying on financing. It's a huge subject in the word of God, Ms. White Kane said. In the New Testament, Jesus talks more about stewardship and finances and management of your life than anything else outside the love of God. Financial stress is a tension she understands. Her memoir recounts that she and her first husband, a musician in Atlantic City, New Jersey, couldn't make rent one time, and she discovered $320 in a jean jacket purchased from a thrift store. She refers to the moment as God hearing her prayers. He answered this one, this very specific need, in a very specific way, Ms. White Kane writes in, something greater. I have no doubt. Asked whether she believes that was God's intervention, Ms. White Kane said she doesn't understand the rules and regulations and the politics of the church, but she knows what it was to be an 18-year-old girl who is hungry for God, that innocence is maintained in this 53-year-old girl, Ms. White Kane said, not that naivety, but that purity, so there are things that I don't understand. I don't understand that I've seen miracles that I've watched God do some things that are very supernatural. The book culminates with her benediction at Mr. 
Trump's January 2017 inaugural, in which she shared the stage with dignitaries including former Vice President Dick Cheney, who gently chided her for shooting selfies and told her to call him Uncle Dick, itself a miraculous trajectory from what she likes to say was a messed-up girl from Mississippi. As she listened to Mr.